victory for a pre-show mix, Mr. Matt Summers. <laughs> Thought you'd like that. I was jamming to the music, brother. It was so opposite of what I've been listening today. I, I, I'll talk about the playlist later, but welcome everybody to another installment of the Clip Listening Lounge. I'm Mark Cassavant. Hi, Mark. And I Hi, how you been? How you been doing? This is happy hour. Don't forget this happy hour. But we're going to get into a couple things first. Well, I'm going to get really happy. So uh, I'm not sure if everyone is. <laughs> so over here is Matt Summers. Over here is Brittany. Roy. <laughs> how you doing? Roy, Roy is there. It's like the Brady Bunch, but backwards. Roy is here, and and Zach is here. So is that Alice right there? Yeah, she's, you know, she quit. MIA. Uh, all right, so Brittany, Brittany Kelly, uh, many of you know of Brittany. Um, she, she has been a little bit behind the scenes in some of these, but we wanted to in reintroduce uh, Brittany to everybody. She is uh, the power behind these events, and we really appreciate everything she does. And we have a special announcement for today, and I'll let Brittany cover that, but let me just tell you. So Brittany is our social media manager. Uh, Brittany, how long have you been with us now? Hey, Brittany. Uh, they tell me 11 years, but it doesn't feel like 11, so. You're taking it to 11. This is the <laughs> yeah. big year. Yeah. Matt Summers, you've been with us for how long? Oh, I started in 92, so I've got a 26-year relationship with this brand. It's amazing. Okay, so uh, everybody knows Matt Summers is our Senior Global Creative Director. I'm just reading this to get it correct. But uh, all the trade shows, all the famous taglines that you've seen, some uh, about offending neighbors, things like that. That's his handiwork. So thumbs up, Matt. Thank you, sir. You rock the world. Uh, you tell it like it is. It's awesome. Roy Delgado, principal engineer, has been with Klipsch, well, since the Paul Klipsch days. But this goes back to what year, Roy? Do you want to admit this? Too damn long. <laughs> 86, and I engineer principles, so cool, <laughs> yes. bro. Yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. <laughs> All right. Welcome, Roy. It's great to have you. A lot of people uh, anticipate these events with you on the yeah, uh, telly. Yeah, sure. yeah, whatever. And then Zach Fire, uh, who is uh, relatively new with the company, but uh, comes with a great education and background in acoustics, and uh, he is uh, an associate product manager. So you remember the days I was joking the other day about Clips and Associates? Well, we have an associate. <laughs> <laughs> yep, I'm one of them. I'm one of the special few. And so Zach, you're and he's a good guy. Resource. Yes, he is. Well, you guys talk a lot. So, and Zach, what, tell us what you do just briefly. Um, so I'm a product manager. So I kind of oversee a lot of the different departments and help get everyone aligned on products we're releasing. Um, and so I am in line. Yeah, I, that's my main priority is keeping Roy in line, making sure he gets done what he needs to. Um, Full time. But yeah, we had, <laughs> bless your heart. <laughs> There's enough charge. I'll tell you that. <laughs> We're gonna move yeah. along. We're gonna move yeah. along. We need more. You need a bonus, bro. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's talk about uh, what we have for today, and then we're gonna get into our standard uh, menu as we get into the topics. So, Brittany or Matt about yeah. the uh, special about, about uh, the giveaway. Yes. Yeah, so I can kick it off. Um, this year we are celebrating 75 years of speakers, headphones, and awesome products. Um, we have a really exciting give giveaway that we're going to launch today. Um, we'll run it for the next month. So anytime you see us post on Instagram um, about the sweepstakes, just like that post and make sure you're following us and you'll have a chance to uh, win a brand new pair of Forte 4s. That's pretty exciting. Ooh. Yeah. Wow. And then, oh, wow. Um, so, yeah. And then we also have um, a giveaway today for best question, which is going to be the SPL 150 subwoofer. Oh my goodness. Yeah, can you, Britt, can, you uh, can you throw that up there real quick so people can see what a behemoth this subwoofer is? 
Yeah. It's the big daddy. So thanks for tuning hertz. in. Yeah. 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 And, and uh, you know, if you, if you want to put a sub with Forte's, then all this might be one to do it uh, as far as, you know, the base extension, you know, it'll, it'll go down to 20 easily. So our uh, sub that we designed also for Dolby Atmos. So uh, it's a great sub. I do recommend it. So thank you so much, Brittany. And uh, we can all have a little quick toast if you want, before you uh, sign off into the mysterious background area that you go to. What what do you guys, this? Yeah, what are you guys drinking? What's Just every, five years? What, yeah. What, what's it's everybody 75. drinking first? Just curious, what are we drinking? I'm drinking the like simple stuff because it's too early for me. Same. In fact, in fact, mom and dad, if you're watching this, Mark made me drink. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, right. All right. Zach, what do you got? We got a Modelo. There you go. You're sucking up now. Yeah. Right. Just for you, Roy. What are you drinking, Mark? Uh, in my Ron John Tubler, I've got some. Uh, <clears throat> Willet bourbon, letting the genie out of the bottle a little bit here. So, very nice. I have it's a little been, bit of cap tab and red cup. What? Well, I just say it's been craft beers for the last few, mm. but I decided this time this is kind of a special. So, I wanted to, you know, it's go the ahead, heavy man, stuff. You got the good stuff out. I'm drinking <laughs> red wine in a metal cup, like always. <laughs> Cheers. You're so weird, Matt. <laughs> Sorry. And what about Brittany? Did you say? Yeah. Um, I'm I'm going with the same route Roy's going, uh, Bud Light. Oh. That's all right. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Cheers, everyone. Yeah. Cheers, Cheers. Cheers. Mr. Paul Clips. Mm. Mm. Paul Clips. Yeah, I'm going to that twice. Uh, Paul Paul would sip on whiskey periodically, right, Roy? Yeah, periodically. But his was Bushnells. That's oh, what we God. used to. When we went to the house, I said, "Paul, you gonna break out the good stuff, bro?" <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, he um, he was not. I mean, he he drank, but not like super de duper, right? Uh, right. You know. In moderation, of course. And you know, well, he, uh, in fact, Valerie said, you know, you don't, you shouldn't come over too often because Paul drinks more when you're here. <laughs> oh, I won't say it. I won't say <laughs> it. It's too easy. That's a good joke right there. But you know, I mean, Paul lived to ninety eight years old. I oh mean, yeah, and back, came you know, to the he, office. Like up to three months when he had to go into the hospital. It's amazing. Wow. Yeah, and he came in there and he terrorized me. I'm so <laughs> scarred. I'm scarred for life. Uh, we miss him. For that. Yeah, yeah, he was driven till the end, man. That's he was, um, it's crazy. He um, he was well. He, I've told you guys before. It's like he was like a second pop to me. He was like a second dad. Uh, so we, we we were close. That's why I say Paul taught me a lot. And some of it was about speakers because he taught me about life too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we can all say that we're in his presence, and uh, we knew uh, we we're among greatness, amongst greatness. Um, so we'll get into the topic of uh, du jour, uh, right? Uh, I guess we have to. Forte Mark Four. They know, in, right? This follows along with some uh, heritage models that we've already launched, uh, the Cornwall 4, which has been highly regarded, and the Heresy 4, which was a pretty big change from the Heresy 3 and, and has uh, some of these enhancements that we determined, uh, the Forte 3 being a fantastic product. Uh, well, well, you want to hear you about how that came about? or Yeah. Well, and it required the Forte four to go to a four not like some kind of incremental change but a full model change to the mark four so yeah let's get into a little bit of the history uh well, take what, it away but what started all this was um the we brought back the forte you know uh carrie and i were he wanted to bring back the forte and so we were talking about how we we're going to do that and all this other crap and and <laughs> it, and it's funny because you know we we did the we did the forte three and um and I told Carrie, you know, we're gonna have to update the others. And and I I just happened to know what some of the things that Paul wanted to do, and I think we should do them. And uh, we had we, and we got a lot of support. Um, Rob Stanley was all on board for it. And um, and so we went through all these changes. And as we were going through these changes, then we get you know we're done, and we get to the three, and I'm going like. 
there's some things that we've done that the three, that the Forte three needs. And um, and I remember Zach and I talking. You know, I, I was telling Zach. I said, um, you know, as we do these changes, it 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 always comes down to, um, is it just going to be a running change? You know, it, it's it sounds better, but it's not significant. Or is it significant enough that we that we need to rev it? And uh, and when I listened to it, um, I said, I told Zach, yeah, it's. It, it's got to be a four. And that's how the four came about. It actually started all the changes and then came, and then ended up at the end of the line and said, okay, we got to bring you into the fold now, even though you led all these changes. Um, now we got to bring you back uh, so, you, so that you sound like your big brothers. Mm. Yeah. We you know what? I want to throw a little uh, little history out there to sort of the preface for this. And you knew I was going to do this, Roy. Um, uh, you know, Klipsch had manufactured the the Forte One and the Forte Two, um, and then the speaker was retired after a while, um, and it was retired for for a good long time. But then when we brought back the Forte. Um, you know, Roy and I started digging into the history of what that was, along with Jim Hunter from the museum, of where it came from and why it was chosen to be a speaker in the first place. Where, what were the origins of it? Um, so in order to bring it back, we wanted to bring it back with some fanfare and talk about where it came from and why it was, you know, a historic speaker and why it was important and why it deserves to be in the heritage line and all those questions that come back whenever you uh, bring back an older speaker and try to rev it. And when we when we were working on the three, um, one of the most exciting parts of it was we discovered that the two uh, and the one um, were some of the most successful and best selling speakers of the entire Klipsch line in the entire history of Klipsch. As a matter of fact, at one point, the factory was working three shifts and they had people just dedicated to clearing ways so the forklifts could get through to move the product and get it shipped out. That's how many Fortes were being sold at one time. So I love the idea of us revving it again, especially with all of the new acoustics that we'll get into during this conversation, um, everything that's been updated in the speaker. But uh, that, you know, it it's, it's a, was a very high bar to, to, to follow. And the three definitely did that. And the four, it just infinitely blows that away as well. So great work, guys. Well, you know, so you, know I, Matt, you know, Matt, uh, you mentioned the the, the three shifts. Uh, I, I remember them <laughs> because uh, we, the engineering was also in charge of the testers. And so me and Carrie had to like flip coins as uh, who was going to take the midnight shift in case they called. <laughs> you know, in case they're having trouble. You're on call. Yeah. Wow. I mean, seriously. Because I took care of I'm not going to spend a night here in Kershaw. I'm going to spend a night here. So we would like, so we started alternating shifts because if they have trouble, if our tester went down, um, you know, we can't stop production. Uh, Kerry, I, I, I liked it because Kerry was like five minutes away from there. I was like, dude, you're right there, bro. <laughs> <laughs> it's so easy. <laughs> and I was, I was like 30 minutes away. So, well, and, and I told Kerry, you know, and the way I drive, forget it, bro. <laughs> well, another, another point I think we should make, and then I'm going to shut up for a little bit because I really want to hear you from you guys about the product, but um, to clear up a little bit of the history, because there is some clouded history about this, and we've cleared this up. We actually went back and did the research. Um, first of all, uh, should the, hair, uh, the Forte be considered part of the heritage line? I want to state first and foremost here to anybody else who is listening, Paul Klipsch never said the word her heritage at all. Never considered any of the products to be heritage, never put anything that, that was created by the Klipsch marketing department in the 90s that I was a part of. We wanted to, to, put, to pull those group of speakers and, and treasure them and keep them pristine off to the side, no matter what the rest of the company did. So, yeah. so, so heritage is, as a moniker is, is a moot point. Um, but the second point was Paul Klipsch was not involved in the development of the, of the, uh, Forte, and that is that I'm calling bullshit on that right now, um, because I have we we have we've seen and it was published in the the Forte book. Paul Clips fully endorsing the use of passive radiator on the back and working with Gary Gillum, the designer of the very first Forte, about the crossover networks and the horns and the drivers. All of it, Paul was involved in um, with Gary. Absolutely. Just 
New, Gary was just newly taking over as the first chief engineer after Paul Klipsch. So he, that was a big deal for him to let go of that and let somebody else take over as that. And well, when when Gary did it, um, Paul was very involved. So I want to clear clarify that. The Forte well, he, is uh, Paul he wanted, product. He wanted his boys to be up front. You know, he's like, he's proud of his boys going out there, right? And he's like, you know, back there said, yeah, these are my boys, right? But he was always involved in, in everything we did. Everything. Yeah. 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 So the Forte yeah. definitely has earned its place in yeah, the yeah. Uh, in the heritage line as a direct descendant of Paul Klipsch. I wanted to clarify that up and then we can move oh. on to talking about the four. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll add that uh, the Fortes are also in the Hall of Fame as one of the most successful Klipsch speakers in, in the company history. So uh, and Zach, I want you to talk about the new features with Roy. I want you guys to get into this, but I would re be remiss if I didn't say that while you guys were scrambling to make them and hope, I was selling them in Florida. And and you know what, as a dealer and then later as a rep, uh, and and I would just say when the, when, you know, me and my buddy Ray, we were selling the Forte Mark I, uh, it was a jaw dropping demo in the store all the time. It was kind of a must demo type of product. Like they came in for something else. We wanna hear something, you know, take two minutes, set them down and just kind of blow their mind with some great sound. And, and of course we had the larger, Horn, fully horn loaded systems and those were also mind blowing. But when they heard a Forte, which was a speaker that they, they could live with, you know, some people made room for the big folded horn, you know, the, the bells, Los Scalas and the clutch horn. But, you know, in the days of the KG4s, KG2s, the Fortes, Heresies, you know, these are speakers they could fit in their house. And oh man, this has like a lot of that big gigantic sound over there, but I can live with this product. So, you know, that kind of brandished what Klipsch means into the brains of people who maybe heard Klipsch for the first time, you know, that this is about jaw dropping, dynamic range, powerful sound. And well, so the, 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 the Mark II, let me just say real quick, I was a, a dealer in Florida when the Mark II came along and the Tractrix horn innovation showed up and, and we had them side by side and I was listening to them side by side and just saying, oh man, this is a game changer, you know? And um, of course, fell in love with them and owned them myself, you know, uh, determined, well, these are the ones I'm going to be taking home. You know, I, I lived in a ta townhouse on the beach, you know, but I made room for them. And, you know, the, the roommates loved them. We cranked them up and had great parties and everything. But the Forte 2s were just a killer. They were a killer at the price point. Um, they're just over a grand, you know, maybe 12, 13 a pair in a real wood, beautiful finish matched wood grain pairs, just gorgeous. They were killers. And then of course, uh, being an employee with Klipsch, uh, they remained uh, a, a hit. And then of course, as we ushered in home theater, right? When we got into ProLogic and <laughs> remember laser discs, and then eventually Dolby Digital came along and then DVD came along. So we got into subwoofers. I demonstrated the first generation Klipsch subwoofers with Forte 2s. That was the killer combination. I had a couple double SW12s up there with a couple Fortes. And it didn't matter what the other vendors brought along for the little show, the mini product show for my accounts. When the, the salespeople sat in front of the Fortes, they're like, yeah, it doesn't matter what wattage you throw at this other stuff, how many dollars you throw at this, it can't do this. And that is the secret of, of Klipsch in general. But uh, it was so much fun, it still is fun. and. Launching the Forte threes, I had a lot of fun at that CES, showing it off with uh, the carry amp with modest amplifier power, just them doing amazing things on a show floor. And then ever since, and now along comes this evolution, which you guys are gonna talk about. And, you know, I've seen the comments, you know, people still love their Fortes, whatever gen they are. There's twos, there, there are threes, there are some ones out there. And there are questions we should address today because this is about the Forte. Distance to the wall, room setup. How do you work it with a sub or subs? You know, there are a lot of good questions. People are asking these questions, lots of curiosity. And we're going to get into all that. Uh, these questions will probably continue to address after this session, as we always do. We try to address some of these questions. Uh, but let's take it to, let's see, I'm looking at my little uh, menu here. Everybody should know if they don't. Uh, now they come with a 10 year warranty. So we're pretty excited about uh, just announcing that again. And then we're gonna get into some of the details of the, the new improvements in the Mark IV. 
So Zach and Roy, would you like to take it from here for a little bit? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, looks like we just lost Roy. Um, he, he'll come back. <laughs> he'll come back. He always comes back. Let's take this opportunity hey, Zach, uh, have a little uh, wet your whistle time. Yeah. You know what I'm hey, hey, Zach, I might just um, mention that um, take a look at that beautiful picture of the fortes that uh, Brittany just put up. Um, oh, yeah. That is the walnut version. Um, sure. And you you can notice the new uh, the, the, the riser base and everything. I mean, the speaker just looks like it's floating in that setup. Yeah. Fantastic right. shot. Sharp. Yeah, so that's Very a sharp. good segue into some of the, we'll start, I guess we could start there with the aesthetic upgrades that we've uh, made on the Forte 4. So as you mentioned, Matt, um, that riser base was removed. Um, previously, we had that veneered riser base, so it would match whatever the veneer of your actual speakers were. Um, and that's a similar update we've made on a lot of these heritage products of making this matte black riser base. It helps to give it that floating appearance, more of a modern appearance. And Mark, as you kind of touched uh, on it before when you were talking about the Fortes, that's kind of what makes these speakers really special, is that they're able to fit in into a lot of homes. You know, a lot of people just don't have the space for clip horns or something like that. Um, the Fortes really give that full range performance and still look great. Um, so we made that improvement there. You also see that the grills are uh, different as well. You can see in that photo, because uh, it's grills off, uh, but we've replaced the black knit cloth, or the black knit cloth grills with the updated salt and pepper grills that you find in all of our new heritage uh, products, whether it be the Cornwall 4, the Heresy 4, or the Clipshorn, the Scala, et cetera. Um, so it gives it just more of that family feeling um, to the speaker. There we go, there's those nice new grills. Um, and obviously, as you can see in that slide, every, every pair we make is a matched pair. So those timbers are kept together throughout the entire process in the factory. And it makes for a really stunning uh, visual when you see them side by side, especially when you see them set up in like a two channel setup or something like that. Um, really cool, really exciting. Roy, are you back now? You wanna talk about some acoustic technology? Uh, I had to go to the nearest tree, sorry. <laughs> Um, so I wanted to start with something that I feel like has flown. I've been reading a lot of reviews and kind of what people are thinking about the Forte 4, um, you know, just to see what's out there. One of the things I feel like has flown under the radar is the uh, all new wide dispersion phase plug. Um, and it kind of flew under the radar on the Cornwall 4 and the Heresy 4 too. You know, there's a lot of updates to those products. And with the Forte, it's kind of the same deal of, you know, it's a really small, um, essentially just a mechanical piece to the speaker, but it makes a world of difference. Um, and one thing I wanted to ask you too, is you said that was, um, you told me once, that was actually uh, Paul Klitsch's idea, or he at least had some feelings about that technology. Well, and, and I guess it's, it, it gets back to uh, what Matt had brought up earlier. Uh, you know, Paul, Paul Klitsch, you know, Paul, Paul, I mean, think about, I came to work with, with for Klitsch when Paul was 82 years old. You know, I mean, Mark is already obstinate and hit, and he's what, you know, forty nine or something. <laughs> so, so, so can you? So can you? I mean, so I, I, I found it very. I find it really weird. Uh, here's an eighty two year old guy been making speakers for a long time, but he, he was constantly wanting to do, you know. How do we advance the art? How do we advance the science? How do we do this? How do we do it? I'm like, Paul, let's go get a drink, bro. But one of the things that, that we that became really apparent because you know of all the testing we've done is that compression drivers, just because of their nature, you know, especially the uh, concave uh, design ones, have this, um, the polars collapse. And, and the reason that they collapse is because a lot of times that's how you get them to be really flat out, you know, beyond the exit of the of the compression driver. And so Paul said, is there any is there anything you think we can do uh, to continue the coverage pattern that we're we're working so hard to maintain in the horn um, beyond the throat of the horn? And, uh, <clears throat> and so uh, Paul and I began to talk about how, how do we adjust the coverage patterns of the compression driver because the compression driver after you know if it's a two inch throat after like six and a half k um the coverage pattern is totally determined by the compression driver if you have a one inch throat it's about 13k and it's totally determined by the 
but by, by the compression driver basically the horn is out of the way the coverage pattern is totally is totally the you know determined by, by by the compression driver and so we actually um uh we machined because back then there were no sla you know so i i broke up my chisel my and my, you know, my <laughs> And I, uh, we actually machined a, a, a little bit of a phasing plug that, that set basically the the foundation about what what we could do. And and you know what happened after that, we put it on the shelf. You know, we said when when the time comes, you know, we use that, uh, just like several other things like mumps was set on the shelf for a while. And so when we got to when we got to the point that we wanted uh, to upgrade um, the heritage line, I said, you know, it, it was really annoying to me to be sitting, listening to a pair of speakers, and you get this really nice image and, and depth and stage. And then as soon as you heard, uh, you know, sibilance or, you know, harmonic overtones of that extended into the tweeter that they, they would you know you have this and it would go right back to directly to the source and yep. um and i said you know what i'm gonna try that i'm gonna see if i can uh, uh bring that back and and have that basically last octave and whatever um focused and be a, a part of the stage on the and uh, on the yes and so uh this this phasing plug uh it's basically it's an inverse tractrix on the expansion of the of the phasing plug and um to try to bring it out to a plane wave but i also didn't want to have um multiple little because they're all little horns basically i didn't want i didn't want multiple horns to be um getting to the point where they actually resonated and so I followed the curvature of the dome and doing that little number plus but the uh, all the things that Paul and I talked about got the the plug to expand evenly and consistently and um so the first time I listened to him I thought how come we didn't do this a long time ago <laughs> just stop putting stuff on the shelf Roy. come on well yeah well you know and there's stuff on the shelf now bro but you know what it, it and it's and it's always about timing i guess because uh there's other things that have to happen sometimes in order to to really appreciate what's going on and and i tell you i think the fact that we started using mumps in the horns started making that problem more glaring and 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 why we ended up uh, you know i got a some slas done and we put them in there and i said no it, it's time you know what you can do is uh, just as a reminder to anybody that's watching this if you want to go to the clips youtube page you can see roy's whole dissertation on mumps and how he uh, achieved that and how he got to that and how he implemented that and the whole uh, point behind it so there's a there's a video there that that will dig way deep into the mumps stuff um, and, and for all you all you guys that don't get it paul and i talked about how do we how do we eliminate that 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 where it collapses before it loses control. That was a Paul Klipsch discussion. Mm. You know, I'll just emphasize this because we are getting technical and, and I think that's great, especially for the Klipsch pilgrims that are on here. I've seen a few. Um, and it's great, great to see all of you guys asking your funny questions. Some are some are rhetorical, I imagine, but uh, some are not, some are not. And, and one thing, you know, I, I do need to, point out to maybe some uh, folks that are a little bit new to this uh, live session that we do and we will do in an ongoing fashion when it comes to new product releases or topics of interest. You know, this heritage line, which we call it, Matt, you know, mm -hmm. if, if that's the case, then we're kind of part of the heritage line as well. But uh, <laughs> well, you're you know, old, bro. <laughs> <laughs> we'll move on from that point, okay. But all I was gonna say is advancing the art, advancing the science, that goes into these, really, they are flagship technologies that we're putting into 
heritage product. You know, I've made this comment before. I've made this at Rocky Mountain Audio Fest that it is so rare in many industries, but this industry in particular, where a heritage product that's lauded, cherished, treasured, protected, is also advanced. You know, and we're not changing it for the sake of change. We are we are taking Paul Klipsch's marching orders, if you will, and Roy, Amen. Roy, see, see, Roy, we're on the same page. We are advancing this because, you know, this is what he wanted, you know, and, mm. and even, even with some materials technology, some advancements of the 21st century that he wasn't aware of, uh, how could he be? But still following that track of absolute improvement and getting closer and closer to the musical fidelity that was always his goal. And remember the funny phrase, not infidelity or you know, I mean, it was actually infidelity or fidelity, not high fidelity. It was yeah. fidelity. Or, you know. It's either it's either faithful or it's not. Right. <laughs> right. It's either fidelity or infidelity. You know, one thing I would I would say that I think is really important, especially if you're a newbie um, and if you just joined, or if you're just getting into hi-fi, or if you're just getting into clips, or you're getting into anything, a little bit about the Forte 101 that maybe we haven't addressed at all. What type of loudspeaker it is? Um, you know, so what's great about the Forte? It is it is a three-way loudspeaker. Um, you know, it has a tweeter, a mid-range, which we used to call squawker, and a woofer in it. Um, but it also has on the backside, and this is the revolutionary part of it, a passive radiator, a speaker without a magnet structure on it that uses the internal force of the air of, of the cabinet to resonate, resonate um, and create and extend the low end of the speaker down uh, far below what the cabinet could. Um, so I think that's uh, sort of that's what you're getting into when you get into Forte. It is a very slim speaker. It's a, a little a taller speaker, a little wider speaker, but very uh, le much, very much less deep than a lot of the speakers that, that we make. Um, but that passive radiator helps extend uh, the low end uh, of the speaker itself, plus all of the new stuff. Um, Roy, I can let you speak to the completely revoiced uh, network drivers and some of that stuff if you want, if you'd like to. Can you flip the speaker around there, Matt? Well, I wanted to show the back side of it with the passive. We've got the front okay. side on the slide we showed before. Oh, okay, okay. Um, <clears throat> what was the question, Matt? Uh, steep flip ne networks. Let's talk about networks. Well, you know, it's interesting. When I came to work for Klipsch, um, Paul was um, already uh, doing a lot of um, research and trying out his little – in fact, I got his notebook, uh, cro uh, uh, his crossover no uh, notebook. And Hunter, no, you can't have it, bro. Uh -huh. uh, so, um, so he was already beginning to understand, or that's the way he explained it to me, beginning to understand that Steve Silk Networks can make each individual component in a, either a two or a three way or even four way uh, become more efficient in its bandwidth. Because, look, he started off making uh, frequency responses uh, one point at a time. It, a frequency response took 45 minutes to do, okay? And a, a, as the equipment became available, he got a URI plotter, um, and then he built a chamber. So all these things offered him more resolution, and he began to, uh, to see that um, these – well, you have these single-pole – you have a lot of interference. Uh, I mean, if you have if you have a uh, compression driver that still has output at 200 hertz, that's not good. And so it may sound good at 2.83 volts or you know normal listening levels, but as you bring it up, you know those those little two inch diaphragms, one inch diaphragms begin to say like, "What the hell, bro?" And so he he began to think about. Uh, if if I can make this this the the slope steeper, I can make them more efficient in their bandwidth. In fact, the first steep slope network that Paul designed himself was in the KP six hundred system, and we had a couple of tweeters in there. And I said, Paul, you know, we're going to use it. This is going to be a concert system. And so, Paul, um, you know, we're going to have to like be really careful. He goes, Yeah, I have the network uh, for you. And he, he designed it and we implemented it. And uh, be, and then we started talking about why he thought 
taking steep steep slope also this is a big misnomer steep slope does not mean more pulls you do not have a constant load on a network it's changing and so you have to you have to work in concert see how you snuck it in there you have to work in concert with the impedance of the actual unit and you can actually use a two pole to have an 18 dB per octave acoustic slope because of the how the impedance is. And so I became very intrigued in that. Um, and, and Paul and I used to used to work on, on how, do, how do we how do we make the individual uh, components more efficient in their bandwidth? And so plus to add on top of that, at the crossover point, how do you get those things to be in phase? and equal amplitude because if you have zach since you're an acoustic guy if you have something minus 60 be down the other one minus 60 be down you have perfect amplitude and perfect phase they add up to zero db will give you a very good crossover point what you don't want is beyond that any any output that will make the or make the frequency response deviate by getting them out of the way and so paul called it the interference man Mm. So he said, well, he said, Mr. Delgado, what we need to do is decrease the interference band as much as we can. And so when we did the K horn and, and we started doing this, I said, it's time for steep slopes to become. Now, on the pro side, we actually do that. We have steep slope networks. But on the consumer side, not so much. From a, so, from a layman's term, I just want to interject what this means from, from the benefit side of this. And correct me if I'm wrong, Roy, um, but for those those of you guys that are watching that maybe that's really in the deep end, um, what this means is that every component of that, of that speaker, the, the, the tweeter, the mid-range, and the woofer is only having to reproduce the sounds in a specific bandwidth, which goes all the way back to the number one tenet of clip speakers, which is efficiency. So the thing you get out of that is efficiency. You get clarity, you get power, and you get dynamics. You get all the things that, that you need to do when each component only has to do its only spe uh, specific job. Uh, if it has to do the job of the, the, the woofer or the tweeter next to it, even 10% of that job of that woofer or that tweeter, then suddenly you start introducing distortion. You start introducing uh, less efficiency. Um, so that's that's why people love the sound of clip speakers is because we keep going more and more towards that efficient state where things have less distortion and uh, um, more clarity. That's why people say clip speakers are the some of the clear, uh, cleanest and the the clearest on the planet. I agree. No, no, absolutely, man. And and you know, and Paul just didn't like his 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 deal was not just hey we're gonna be you know highly efficient we're gonna have uh, a, a low distortion where we're going to have controlled coverage or that or we're going to have a controlled frequency response. You know, that, that those were just words. Um, those were actual design elements that he was always looking at. And, uh, and I, I got to tell you the first time I, I never heard a clip speaker till I interviewed. And the first time I ever heard uh, a, a pair of clip horns, I was, um, I used to play in bands and stuff. And I had, you know, what I thought were like cool speakers. And so when I heard the clips horns, I said, you know, Paul, I don't know how you did that, but that's, that is like live sound quality. Life changing. Did you say, excuse me, Mr. Clips, I have to change my underwear. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, no, he said, here, here, here's this bag. Cause I know what's going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have I'm going to have to refill this if you guys keep this up. <laughs> so yep. I, I'm going to make a couple comments because I've been watching some of the questions. And, you know, there there's a ton of experience here. And, I, and I, I, have to go, I have to go uh, near his tree again. No. I, no. Are you kidding me? Didn't you warn him, Matt, before this? Oh, my gosh. That's funny. I think he did, he doesn't want to hear me talk is what it is. And that's okay. <laughs> Because Travis and, and we got a lot of people uh, asking some fun questions. And uh, so I, I read something very funny. Somebody posted, uh, my my six-year-old Ebony Forte threes are getting nervous. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> so listen, all I want to share with 
you all is uh, we have done some listening here and uh, obviously approvals on the voicing. And, you know, there was a question about it says in the marketing materials entirely revoiced. And what that means is it, it has to be revoiced for the new drivers, uh, in particular, the mid range, right, which is a new poly polyamide uh, new compression driver on the mid range and with the associated networks. So, uh, you know, th there is always that starting from scratch approach, which we do. And what's remarkable, remarkable, and that was the word I, I texted to Roy uh, about an hour ago, um, just looking at the, the, the polar responses of the new four T fours. It's remarkable that, you know, actually the questions about specs, the specs are gonna remain the same. The sensitivity is the same. The frequency response is the same. The tolerance on the response is the same. Uh, the curves might look a little different, of course, because the drivers are uh, a little bit different, but we're achieving that same optimally flat, natural uh, spectral balance. And then of course the sensitivity, which is gonna be on the order of 97 to 98 decibels with a watt, that's that's 2.83 volts at one meter. and our, our approach to calculating this, there have been questions about how does Klipsch calculate sensitivity? We won't get all into the weeds on that. We're probably gonna dedicate a different session to that, but basically it's an anechoic measurement with a ground plane measurement, okay? Which is basically a half space anechoic ground plane measurement that really replicates the anticipated sensitivity in a typical living room uh, or a space, an enclosed space like behind me, you know, an enclosed are, wall. Are you talking like about uh, our sensitivity measurements? I'm just touching on it briefly because I'm mentioning, Roy, the specs are the same. The response, the overall sensitivity. Yes. Well, now, uh, what is I'll, I'll make it. I'll make it real simple. You know how we measure sensitivity? The right Go way. Go ahead. <laughs> well, <laughs> the thing is, clears it up, Roy. <laughs> we, we, well, you know, we have talked about this, and I, we do have limited time, and I don't want to spend too much on this. But you know, Paul Klipsch himself, he established measurement approaches and principles to accurately replicate what a loudspeaker does in a typical environment. And that goes back to the AES days, you know? Oh yeah. And, and, and the journals and, and basically and the society. Yes. Establishing this for the industry. So, you know, there are some people at home with some equipment that think they can, you know, approximate, you know, the professional measurements and, and tactics that, that we have used and, and we are advancing actually in measurements and accuracy. And um, we'll, we'll cover that in another session, everybody. Uh, that, that's good stuff. But this is what I wanted to touch on. And Roy, I know you're going to want to talk about this. I, I've got to get this out because I'm looking at the clock and we've got roughly 15 minutes for this session. We'll probably stretch it a little bit. You know, we typically yeah, that's but, true. You know, but the, the polar patterns, you know, I, this, I, this have a, I have a 12 pack in there. So we, let's stretch. Yeah. yeah, I've got a whole bottle of this right here. So I, I'm not worried. You know? <laughs> um, but but uh, you know, this is what's so cool. And I have to tell everybody as a musician, you know, listening to some of my favorite music, um, Roy and I, we, we, we talked about this and, and it was kind of like a, a revelation a little bit as we are advancing the art of our control directivity. Um, and then also all the way up the spectrum, you know, high frequencies out of dome tweeters, they tend to beam like laser beams. You know, you might see specifications out there, some speaker companies claiming 50 kilohertz you know, I don't know if you remember back in the 70s and 80s, Travis, uh, how, you know, amplifier companies would would amp, would amp measure their amps for DC to light, you know, zero hertz to 100 kilohertz, you know, speakers that could do 100 kilohertz, you know, these planar speakers and any speaker that claims the super wide coverage, you know, with super high frequencies, well, they're not telling the truth. And I think Matt has a button for that. But but I will add that what this remarkable wide dispersion, yes, there it is, the wide dispersion phase plug, which we've implemented on the course and the, oops, did I say chorus? The chorus, Corn, bro. Cornwall, the, somebody asked about the chorus. They got it into my head. That was really good, that was good. The Cornwall and the Heresy. And not to mention pro products. You know, we've used this phase plug on some of the pro, pro products, right, Roy? I mean, that's really kind of the genesis of it. But yeah, it's in our surrounds. Yeah, what, right. So what this, what this does is it actually, as the frequencies go up, typically they collapse. Well, what this phase plug does is it maintains the coverage pattern. And I looked at the polars today, I mean, up to the highest frequencies of our human hearing mechanism. So this is what happens, because everybody's like, oh, that's, that's really fascinating technical stuff, Jan, you know. 
this is what happens with your music. When you're listening and you have, let's say, I mean, I, I go to the jazz trio because it's easy to place musicians, right? But boring. I also, I, what, okay, it's boring, fine. But <laughs> boring works for me right now. And that's why I get along with you, right? But anyway, the point is, uh, <laughs> the point, the point is, I'm a, I'm a drummer. I like cymbals, and and I like to place the drum kit as well as the musician. So when a female vocalist is there and standing in the middle, it's easy, you know, good sound stage. The cymbals sometimes, mm, where are they? I don't know. Are they over here? Over there? And what Roy and I have discussed is that, you know, with wide dispersion. Uh, when I say wide dispersion, I'm talking about a 90 degree pattern through the mids, you know, good imaging from the clips, focused yet open. And then suddenly a, a hi-hat zeroes your, in, zeroes your ear in on not where the hi-hat should be by the snare drum, the hi-hat suddenly is at the speaker, you know, and that's that localization of ultra high frequencies. Uh, and I think Roy, you mentioned sibilance earlier. Those ultra high, you know, S's, the sounds and vocals, you know, sibilant frequencies that are very high frequency. And sometimes those sound sources no longer are located on the stage properly. They get zeroed into the speakers. And you'll notice that if you really key in on some of your music. The magic of this new generation is, and I say magic because it is magic. It gets me very excited. Zach, you and I, we talked about it. How all the way up to the highest frequencies, the highest sibilant sounds, whether it's in a female voice, uh, a crash cymbal, uh, some kind of stringed instrument in an orchestra, hi-hats, cymbals, rides, whatever, remain stable in the image, in the sonic image. And you cannot place where the speakers are all the way up. Now, I'm gonna add that that is not possible with standard direct radiating tweeters because they localize, they are like laser beams at those high well, frequencies. Well, well, it's it's not it's it's physics. Right. It's physics. So these wide dispersion phase plugs are doing what has been impossible prior. So, you know, these horns were delivering this 90 degree pattern roughly. And then even at the high frequencies, we're delivering this consistent. And I looked at the polars. I mean, it's damn near a hundred degrees, you know, at these high frequencies. And I just, I'm so, happy when I saw these, uh, you know, the objective measurements, because what we heard, I was like, that is extraordinary. And I'm hearing this and then to see it on the, uh, the plots. So this is where <laughs> I hate to say it, the 14.3s, they might be getting a little nervous because of the 14.4. <laughs> but let me tell you a funny thing that I did with my 14.3s, everybody. And Roy, he enabled me to do this. I have Forte 3.5s. Okay. I swapped out this. <laughs> I swapped this out. This is the Tractrix uh, high frequency horn on the threes, and I swapped it out for the. Now that's not legit because it, it's now, not. Everybody like, who wants an upgrade kit is going no, to no. scream. Well, they can't you, do that. Well, Way to go, Mark. Mark. It's a Way hack. It's a hack. I did it six months ago. It's a hack. I did it because I wasn't going to wait around for Zach to send me samples. I was just like, I got to. I got. I know. I got to know what this tweeter's doing right now. So yeah, I'm gonna see. I, 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 that's why I invited you. I'm gonna, you know, pick on you a little bit. Now, I'm, I'm gonna get a lot of emails. I say, hey, we're gonna send no. me some of the plugs, bro. No, you can't. Here's why you can't do it because this. It's the mid range. Also, this polyamide, this extraordinary mid range, which opens up the mid range, and it's just jaw dropping. So now I'm. I'm like, well, I've got to restore my threes, and then I've got to get some fours. You know, it's that ever pursuit. You know, it just continues. But I'm telling you, it got me excited then. It, it has me excited now because, you know, look, we're 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 part of the heritage program. You know, we're getting up there in our years. But I can tell you that, and this goes for all of our audiophile listeners, our fans, and our friends. You know, with experience and and knowledge and listening, your ears continue to improve because your brain is still learning. You're still improving, and you know. Hopefully everyone's protecting their ears, being careful with the in-ear monitors or listening too loud. You know, no one's really been to concerts lately. You got to be careful with sound pressure, but protect your hearing. You only have, you know, two ears and um, they don't regenerate. So, you know, it's important because you can continue to enjoy great fidelity with the Forte 4s, for example, for years and decades to come. 
So these will serve your music like you never heard before. And and the you know the the, the reviewers have who have gotten their hands on the Cornwall fours and the Heresy fours, they know what we're talking about because they're getting this technology in those models. But finally, it's reaching the Forte fours. I'm I'm very jazzed up about it because it's not just about. I mean, all the technical wizardry that these guys are talking about is so real. It's so legit. It's so engineering based. It's it's on the bedrock of engineering, like everything Klipsch. But when I heard it and I, I, I likened it to the music I'm so familiar with, you know, and I know Bess, you're on here. I see a lot of people, Mike Dyer, you're on here. Um, you know, guys I've known for years, audiophile nuts that, that are fanatical musicians and have that passion. This is the stuff that you've been waiting for. I mean, this is the good stuff and this evolution continues. So I'm going to stop talking now. You guys take it from here. We're going to make a, a, a couple of quick questions, and I want to I want to be able to get some words from Zach uh, as well on this. Um, but the first question, we had an excellent question on the chat, um, which is um, from my personal experience as well, um, is how has modern music production caused you to evolve the speakers? And one of the things that I will say is when I have been to the pilgrimages and hope or been in private listening sessions with Roy, um, a lot of times we will go deep with some EDM stuff or we will go deep oh. with some electronic stuff just because, oh. you know, what does a 12 Hertz bass wave sound like? You know, some of those things. Um, but the question was, how does that influence, you know, because I'm thinking about production and reproduction. And you, you talk about what was captured earlier there, you know, way before, whether it was on tape or vinyl or whatever, um, you have a limited bandwidth. And now with EDM, with, with a lot of these electronic music stuff, people can just dictate whatever uh, frequency they want to, to, to broadcast at. Um, so how does that influence the, uh, the, the speaker design? Zach? Oh man, that's a, that's a tough question. Um, I think there's another piece of it too, Matt, that I've noticed a lot is, um, you know, with the accessibility of producing music, um, there's a lot of artists who are, you know, recording things on the go. They're in tour buses, they're in hotel rooms, and that's where they're actually creating. And ultimately some of those recordings get used in the final mixes. It's a lot different from, you know, a lot of the uh, demo material used back in the day where it's in a recorded in a professional environment by professional recording engineers and gets mixed and mastered by, um, more professional. So that's a hard question from that standpoint alone of, you know, do you, it's essentially like, do you make the lowest common denominator in terms of sound quality sound good on your speaker? And that can be tough, um, especially with your question of reproduction, because you're getting all those flaws in your reproduction. So that's why you have to be really careful with your source material. Um, and especially, you know, for our purposes, demo music, um, there's a lot of music I love to listen to that just you know, on high quality systems just doesn't sound very good, um, to be honest, you know, no, you know that I love and I connect to, but, mm. you know, it doesn't have that impact that a really well recorded, professionally recorded song would. But we've said for years, you know, crap in, crap out. You know, if you right. get, it, it really exposes the flaws in a lot of mixes when you have a high sensitivity speaker. Um, but one of the things that intrigues me is if somebody is producing something entirely in the digital domain where they never, uh, you're never introducing air into it at all. It's only electronic signals. And then, you know, a good example of that is, uh, you know, when we went to the pilgrimage and Roy set up a pro system with the 1802 and suddenly we're pumping uh, EDM through this. That's never actually had a microphone attached to any of the recording process at all. It's only been digital and that system held up insanely good. And I will say that that's one of the things that Klipsch does re uh, very well is all of those little details, all of those things that are in the electronic signal as well as the acoustic signal um, seem to be re reproduced, um, you know, with all cylinders, you know, pumping as, as hard as they can. It's, it's, it's effortless. Well, you know, well, you know I, I guess uh, sometime in, I guess I forget what, what year it was, but I guess it was in the nineties. We did a thing that said digital ready. And, <laughs> and, 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 and I, and I thought to myself, you know, that's because, Zach is absolutely right. There, uh, there's certain music that I listen to, and and it <clears throat> it just doesn't sound as good because uh, on, on on these type of speakers because they're high resolution, <clears throat> and it and it will show you all the caca that's in it. I mean, that's really the bottom line. And why I say, Mr. Watley, I know I saw you in there. God bless 
good recording engineers and good master <laughs> that you know that that preserve this stuff because uh, I I've, I've heard good music recorded really crappy, and and why I kind of take it uh taking it a bit further just for my personal library to kind of try to remix it and bring some life back into these songs so that uh, because it's just squashed. But ultimately, that that really is. If you listen to something or if you record through something that that it's not going to give you that resolution and why as a recording guy as well i used to you know i have a little recording studio i would go to my car right and you know i put it on the headphones and i put it on my system to see i want to crap i i know i need to do this and I, I got tired of that and i said you know what i'm gonna make me some studio monitors where i don't have to do that crap anymore and um uh, but but that's that's really what it what it boils down to i always thought for a clip system that it was not the weak link it, it really was a source material. And and so why I pick, you know, in, in the beginning, I, I pick songs, but I would also go see the artist live because I wanted to, you know, I, I was in, and, you know, I'm sure some of these guys have heard me tell this story, but you're going to hear it again. Too bad. Um, is uh, I heard, you know, I forget who gave me the disc of, of Bonnie Ray and I listened to it and it sounded really good, but her, her voice was kind of, scratchy and a little piercing and so I, I i took it upon myself on the on the network to take it out except when i went to go hear her in a little club and i thought damn she does sound scratchy and a little you know, <laughs> <laughs> so i better go put that back that's the source material <laughs> right. well, because, well, because I, yeah exactly because i, I i'm i'm because the, the the clips should you know you know, I used to hear Paul say this. The goal with the speaker is to have, have it be like, you know, you've heard an amplifier, right? Wire with gain. Well, a speaker uh, it should not get in the way of that. It, it, it should offer uh, it should offer the directivity, the sensitivity, and offer as less of coloration as you can. Now, Paul would say that the reason it's still an art because is because we haven't learned to measure everything that we need to. And so we can get all these this data and stuff, but ultimately I go to my listening room, right? And and if it if if it doesn't sound as good as I I had hoped, then it's I have to go back and try to figure out from my measurement standpoint, who, what did I miss? You know, because ultimately you still have to use these. Yeah, well, yeah. This is it. This is your final measuring tool, and. You know, I got to tell you, and, and uh, Zach, before I came into the office today, I told you uh, I went down to the basement and I hit the Yamaha Maple Absolute kit a little bit, you know, uh, before I listened to some of these prototypes. And uh, <laughs> we lost Roy again. <laughs> Sorry, I had to point that out. I mean, it wasn't obvious. <laughs> but, you know, you know, Matt, you, you play an instrument. Um, I, I'm pretty sure Roy still does. Uh, and, and, you know, live recordings are great. Playing a musical instrument is a great reference because you know what the dynamics are. You know what the subtle uh, micro dynamics are, the, the subtle harmonics, the, the, <laughs> the utter lack of distortion components. It, it, you're hearing what's naturally emanated from the instrument. And, you know, for all you drummers out there, it pays to invest in quality cymbals. I'm just going to say that. All right. <laughs> And, and tune your drums, all right? Tune your drums. And I know Matt Wild is on here, so he knows how a fanatical I am about drum tuning. But, you know, the bottom line is uh, that is often my standard, you know, when I hear the live near field sound of a, of a powerful instrument. Um, of course, my buddy Dave, uh, Dave, you know, uh, I'm, Matt, you know Dave at, at the uh, Jazz Kitchen, you know, some of my favorite world-renowned artists uh, playing live there, you uh, you know, Paul Jacobs is, is uh, he's on the front lines of live music and he, 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 he finds a way to get to these uh, difficult uh, concerts, you know, that, you know, he finds a way to get in. So, <laughs> but, you know, we're all big fans of live music and it's our standard. Uh, you know, it's funny. I, I saw some of the messages about mastering, remastering and, you know, what is the reference for electronic music? And I, I have found so many pieces of electronic music uh, I won't mention the bands, but um, 
where uh, there's been bleed through of ultra deep uh, frequencies that are not musical and not intended to get through. But when you have a system that's capable of, you know, response below 20 hertz, you hear some of the stuff because they're using monitors maybe well, with, white, with white woofer cones that don't have any base extension. You know, I mean? I'm not going to pick on anybody in particular. But Matt, well, you know what, what I'm talking about. What, what I was going to say, you and Matt earlier said where you hear 12 and 10 or whatever, you don't hear it, bro. A real one, a real one, you feel it. Yeah. And if you're hearing, if you're hearing it, then it's just your distortion is a little you're hearing, Yeah. You're, you're, you're hearing an octave. Yeah. 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 You're hearing a bunch of garbage. You're hearing but, an octave of it. But um, anybody, so I have one comment. I have to make it about 4T4s because we're going to switch gears. Matt, I'm probably taking the words out of your mouth. Maybe all of you guys. But here is the thing about 4Ts. And I, I, I think I thought this about the 3s. And now I feel it even more so for the 4s. If you ever wanted an accurate, and I hesitate to say studio monitor, because I think that sometimes that's even not even giving it the credit that it's due. If you want a true measure of accuracy on your music, the Forte fours are going to reveal things to you that you think you know about your music. And I'm talking music you've listened to for decades. And the only reason I'm taking such a strong position on this is because I myself have lived through this and I am nuts about my music selection. I'm very eclectic, but it takes me into new journeys. Uh, and I often can't sleep at night because I cannot turn it off. I mean, that's what it will do to you. That's what it should do to you, honestly. If you love your music and you make the investment, that's what the Forte 4s are going to do for you. And I thought, oh, you know, I love the bass. I love the highs. It was the mids that grabbed me by the shoulders and said, mm, sit down and you listen. You have not heard this before. I mean, it was unbelievable how this new Heritage line, and yes, the Cornwall 4s have this technology, the heresies, you know, for people who have asked. Yes, the Cornwall 4s four, are ready to go. And now the Forte 4s have this. Well, they the, were, the Forte 4s are just basically catching up. They're catching up, right. I mean, they were, the threes were out there, the Forte threes were out there, they kind of were blazing the new trails for the Heritage line and then everything kind of, you know. So, hey, so here we are. Mark, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna text you the, I'm gonna text you a number for a therapist, bro. <laughs> are you talking to me or Mark? I'm Mark. good, I'm good. <laughs> He's I'm good. good, he's good. Um, What I will say in, in, in sort of closing about the Forte part, Forte fours are available now. We just talked to Hope. They're they're producing them like crazy. Um, if you want to audition a pair of Forte fours or talk to a dealer, um, the Eclipse Heritage Dealer Program is really what is uh, um, what, what we're trying to trying to push here. Um, the, the the dealers that are displaying her heritage, um, they are showing the heritage product. There, you can walk in and you can get a, a demo of the, of the Forte fours. Um, but go to the Clips website and and find a dealer near you that uh, is a heritage dealer because they have to be authorized to sell the product. It is totally protected. Um, so uh, find that and then you can arrange to, uh, to hear a demo or you can talk to that dealer close to you to, uh, to get a pair because uh, you know you want them already. Yep. Good, 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 Matt. Sweet. You guys, the time always flies by. It always flies by. Yeah, fantastic. Well, well especially when we're talking about this kind of stuff, you know, you should have made it six hours. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> we have like three people watching at six hours. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, they can tune out in in and out. I mean, I mean, I went. I specifically went and got a tote pack for this. Well, you know, I want to before we close out the 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 forte stuff. I want to ask Zach a question because I feel like you know Roy and Mark and myself, we are really strong Zach personalities. Is quiet, and Zach. Zach is so sorry. Quiet. I, I want to ask Zach. I want to interrupt. Can you sure, tell? Sure. Can you tell the hundred and five people watching right now, um, what is your favorite part about the Forte? What do you love about the, the Forte Four? Oh man, um, I'll I'll tell a story. Um, and I was going to bring this up earlier when I know we already talked a lot about the wide dispersion phase plug, but you know when you're sitting in front of the speakers, like you do notice that uh, ability to not localize that tweeter um, beaming at you. I was re really um, impressive when you're sitting right there. But what really drove home this technology for me is when I showed Mark uh, the demo, I set up the demo for him, he came in to listen. And, um, you know, especially right now, we're <laughs> keeping our distance from each other. So I was like way off in the corner of the room. 
um, and he was playing a track and it had a female vocal. I don't remember specifically what track it was, but it was a female vocal. And he was switching between the threes and the fours. And the, as soon as he would go to the threes, it would just boom straight to that, that tweeter. Like I could have had my eyes closed and pointed to where that speaker was in the room. And then as soon as he went back to the fours, it just disappeared in space and sounded completely natural. Like, like there was somebody in the room with us. Um, I think that just really speaks to the improvements Roy's made on the speaker and kudos to him. I just got lucky, bro. <laughs> that's probably like, these days. yeah. That's two hundred get luckies in a row. Yeah. Well, let's I've take him to Vegas. I've had a couple of duds. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's take him to Vegas. We'll still beat the house. <laughs> we should probably move this over to the auction part of the evening. Um, I'd like to set that up a little bit if we could. Um, yeah. I've got an image I want to show. Um, we are going to auction off. A, um, a pair of Heresy 4s that are the um, Klipsch Museum edition, meaning they Paul are Klipsch. Paul Klipsch Museum. The Paul Klipsch Museum. These are one of one. Um, the only pair made that look like this. They have been signed on the back. Britt, if you could share the image, um, that would be fantastic. Um, so take a look at this. Um, these speakers are Black Limba. Um, which is an exotic wood. Um, they are signed and numbered by the people who made them. In addition to having the plaque on the back, they have um, they are signed by all of the craftspeople who sanded them, who worked on the veneer, who did the install. Um, all of those people have signed on the back. So this is the only pair in existence, and 100% of the proceeds go to benefit the Klipsch Museum of Audio History to allow us to preserve and um, disseminate the uh, findings and the um, the uh, acoustical research of Paul W. Klipsch into the world as a sort of a STEM project, um, so people can learn about how uh, how acoustics works and get more people excited about uh, the the world of audio. Um, so the museum is doing a great job of of, of uh, promoting um, the, uh, the the Paul Klipsch side of things um, and what he has uh, brought to the world as far as uh, acoustics um but uh purchase of these klipsch heresy fours um which we've been talking about tonight who have the same acoustic updates by the way of the, as the fortes um but they are one of one again and signed 100 percent of the proceeds go to benefit the museum we are in the chat um looking for a minimum of uh 2500 uh for the initial bid we'll start it at that and at the end of the next half hour um, at 5.30 um, Eastern time, um, whoever has the highest bid will win these speakers. So um, we would love for you to have them. Um, Roy, do, would you like to say anything about these speakers? Oh, absolutely. Um, I, I'm, kind of, I'm very involved in the Clips Museum. Um, when I first got to, when I first interviewed uh, with, with Paul, he showed me his, his baby and he loved uh, keeping up with the, the history since he was uh, so much a, grew up and a whole bunch of it and and also uh, uh, understood that in order for him to advance the art and the and the, uh, and the science of it he had to remember what people were doing at the time and so he, he his museum was yeah he was very very fond of his museum and so uh when the idea to make this a uh, a non-profit a museum i Raise my hand. I want to be a part of it um, because uh, I remember how fond he was, and I was very fond of Paul. and uh, And I, I would like to continue uh, his legacy, in particular with the speakers. So, since you know, I kind of work for Clips sometimes. Um, I uh, I handpicked the drivers. They're matched. They're matched within a quarter dB. We match the networks. So these these are a very very special pair. Um, so that uh, uh, you get a match, the wood matches. Uh, I mean, it's just uh, the picture does not do them justice at how beautiful they look. Um, and so um, we put a lot of a lot of care and effort into them. Uh, it would greatly benefit the museum so that we can continue working on Paul's baby. We already have a, a, a bid of twenty five hundred dollars for these right off right off the bat. So that's well, our uh, uh, Mike. Ooh. Mike uh, Doug Morris is at four thousand. 
Doug, or Doug Morris. Doug Morris is a four thousand. Fantastic. Wow. Wow. That's going to a great cause. Great cause. I will say I have a vendetta against the museum because they chose this black limba veneer as their oh, yeah. veneer. And it's probably story. the coolest veneer I've ever seen. And so we can't, as Klitsch, the, the company, we can't use that veneer for our special editions. That, that's, a great, that, that's, a great, that's a great point. I showed it to Zach and Zach said, well, man, that's a, that's beautiful veneer. Uh, we should do special editions. I said, ah, 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 ah. you can't use it, Zach. And I told him, yeah, they're they're beautiful. It's you know we 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 wanted to uh, make it all the special editions, you know, all the because Clips is very generous and they, they give us as soon as we introduce a product, we you know they give us a pair and we do it in this limba and we do it you know the grills and I pick the drivers and everybody signs them. And we've done the K horns, we've done the scallops, we've done corn walls, um, and many portraits. And then uh, the heresies, and so uh, I heard that. <laughs> well, there, and there can't be a, a more if you're looking for bragging rights. There can't be a more exclusive speaker than one of one signed by every craftsman that made it. Every person that put their hands on this has, has signed the speaker. The drivers have been mat, uh, matched by Roy, um, the designer of the speaker. So um, looks like we are at forty five hundred dollars right now for the speakers. What? There's a question. What's the original uh, retail on these? Uh, original retail? Yeah. Um, because um, it's hard to do that. I mean, right. if, if you think yeah. about it, I mean, a, a pair of Heresy 4s is three grand. But right. Because That's of, that. you know, because of the special veneer, because of the grills, because of all this special stuff, because it's for Paul's Museum, you know, we yeah. typically in the past, we've done 20 to 25% over retail. Right. Uh, right. so but it's I, see, I see a bid for forty-seven fifty. You know what's really great about these? I will also uh, uh, reach out and uh, uh, let you guys know that um, Duracrest has been the uh, the grill manufacturer for Clips for decades. Decades on all of their all and of I have to deal with that bonehead Portino. <laughs> <laughs> But they have come up with a special museum edition grill fabric that oh, uh, is in the graphics we can show you. Um, but uh, basically, that grill fabric is you will not find that anywhere else. You will not see that on any other speaker. So specifically it is for these. One of one. For the museum, yep. Yep. Has anyone noticed how, uh, <clears throat> you know, Chief Bonehead over here, by the way, uh, before we went live, it, he spelled it B-O-N-H-E-A-D. So he had to fix that, which was true to form. And then uh, the clip <laughs> logo, he actually did it in the original script. You know, when I was a dealer, the K was lowercase. So in another uh, expression of rebellion, uh, Chief Bonehead <laughs> has the clip logo as the original the lower script. Lowercase. Yeah, lower right? Yes. Clip trivia for y'all. You know, it's funny. We talked about this the other night. My first job working for Klipsch was to recreate the logo of the taking it from the small K to the, the larger K. And, and what and did then, I say, Matt? Yeah, yeah, exactly. You're just like, you might as well have just forgotten that day. <laughs> <laughs> the funny part was 25 years later when we were doing our brand standards, I had to go back and revise my own pencil sketches to actually make a vector version of the logo because we were entering the 20th century, you know. <laughs> and this is why we are part of the Heritage Program, you know. We, <laughs> right. you know. Uh, but you know, oh, I, I see five thousand now. That's awesome. Ooh. So let's go down. Let's go down memory lane a little bit with uh, with our friend Zach here. So you know, as as a Clips dealer uh, in Florida, uh, we had wood samples in the store of all the options possible in the uh, Clips horn and some of the upper models, and that included you know woods that obviously aren't available today from rosewood to zebra wood, zebra to wood. Yeah. Teak, teak, I think pecan might have been in there. Of course, walnut, maybe a black walnut, um, different, all these different woods. And we just, that I like Jerry's, it. Jerry's going to hate you. No? <laughs> Jerry. Oh, he already hates me. He already hates me. But a lot of these woods, uh, you know, you just, they're not available today, you know, obviously. So, you know, we're, we're very uh, conscious of, uh, re renewable woods, obviously, you know, not endangered woods, but protected and um, uh, resourced 
woods, you know, um, and, and, and so of course that, that does play into the woods we use today in the 21st century. But, you know, we do still look for opportunities uh, to find unique woods that are uh, not endangered, but still very exotic, very cool and um, abundant, obviously. So we're, we're very conscious of that. I just wanted people to know that you might see some exotic finishes from us, but we're still very conscious of uh, renewables, you know, um, not endangered woods. But I can tell you that back in the day, I did order uh, some K-horns uh, for a customer with one of those really wild finishes. And I had never seen, as a dealer, I had never seen them in that finish. So I often volunteered, you know, to go set up the product in their home to also check them out, to check it out, you know, because it was, you know, anytime a big pair of clips came along, it was like, it was like Christmas morning or Hanukkah or whatever, you know, I mean, the point is it was just a big event and it was fun as a dealer to do that. And also even as a rep uh, in the Southeast, when um, dealers ordered a special pair, you know, just to be part of that handholding, even, you know, maybe writing a letter to the new owner or giving them a t-shirt or some kind of, you know, crazy thing, like a very unobtainium today. I have a few in my uh, rep tool kit, uh, Jeff Pung, if you're on here, you know, Mike Dyer, all the reps from back in the day, you know, where I had the stolen from Paul Clips pocket knives. I still have a couple of those vintage, not reproductions, vintage, you know, actually stolen from him. <laughs> I, yeah, I stole some from him, but I actually used the knives. Um, uh, I will go there. I want well, to talk uh, <laughs> a little bit about, sorry to interrupt you guys, but I want to talk a little bit about where the heresy came from, just mm -hmm. so we have that here. Um, so originally, um, Paul Klipsch was, um, you know, uh, messing around with stereo in 1952, 1953. Now, the first stereo EP came out in 1957. So he was way ahead of the curve. He was looking at how to, how to go from one speaker to two speakers, um, which effectively doubled the sales, right? Um, but once he found that the Klipsch horn and stereo um, as a wide room, if you had a 20 foot wide room or whatever, you were missing some of the center channel information. So Paul really got into three channel stereo with a center channel. Um, as early as 1952, he was into that. And the picture that we're showing now is a, an actual re, um, um, uh, layout for a catalog of three channel stereo. Um, but he did not know what to call the speaker. He wasn't sure what to call it um, because it sat in the middle. And so one of his dealers suggested, he said, you know, this speaker is not a corner horn and everything you've made up until now is a, either lives in a corner or is about the corner. Um, it's kind of heresy to free to make a speaker that's a free form standing in the room speaker. And Paul and said- it was, it was a small sealed box, yeah. small sealed enclosure. Exactly, no, no uh, 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 LF horn or any of that. It was a small enclosure. And Paul said, that's exactly what I'm gonna call it is the heresy because the dealer had suggested that. They went on to create some very, very cheeky advertisements. Um, if you remember, Klipsch was a big provider of speakers for houses of worship um, for a long time and still is. Um, yeah. But they, we had an ad, ad campaign for a long time that was heresy in the church. And it was all about, that was the headline, heresy in the church. And it was all about bringing these speakers in so that you could hear the parishioner speak or the, you know, the, the minister speak or whatever. Um, there are some good stories about Paul Klipsch and ministers. That's where, know. yeah, a lot of it. Well, remember that, Matt, you remember that? Call bullshit on the minister. You remember that ad, heresy, is, a little heresy is good for the soul. Hey, a little heresy is good for the soul. And heresy in the church was a big deal. Um, they had a whole a whole ad campaign based around that. And we sold a lot of speakers to houses of worship because of, of uh, that ad campaign. Well, you know, and, and to kind of kind of extend a little bit on that, Matt, is when I first came here, you know, when I first moved to Hope, um, I, uh, you know, I was looking for uh, for a church and I found one here, you know, a local. And I went in and I said, hey, you have Cornwall. Cool. You know, right. <clears throat> and then uh, come to find out that Paul, like within a, a certain mile, rate, he would donate because, you know, Paul was a, a very devout man. And, and he would donate uh, speakers to churches if they just ask. And he, he cool. so so. There's a lot of churches around here that are like ultra cool already, you know, uh, because they they already have clips in there, and you can hear the word "perfecto mundo." <laughs> <laughs> what, do think, what do you think was Summer's uh, inspiration? A few, you know, a few CESs ago about 
Let's just tell it like it is. Yeah. You know, with all Stop of the buying crap audio. Stop buying crap <laughs> audio. It's embarrassing. <laughs> that, was his, that was his inspiration. That was his inspiration. They came directly from PWK. If we didn't have that oh. license from the founder to just be cheeky and, and say it like it was, then we probably yeah. wouldn't go on there. But, you know, we've been calling bullshit on a lot of stuff for a long time. Well, you, do you remember the PC bullshit button? What was what, what was the PC bullshit button? It, oh, was, the, a, it, it, was, out? it was a bull taking a crap with the thing on it. I'm going like, uh, come on, people. Let's just say it. Just say it. Oh, I've got it's a rubber stamp. The girls gave me an ink stamp that has the bull with the line through. I've got it here on my desk somewhere. You know, just it used to be an stamp. old English type on a yellow button. <laughs> I put it on their homework. You know, when I approve it. You know, <laughs> you know we need. We, Zach, just to, Zach, just a Zach, joke. Zach, you need to give people time to talk, bro. Okay. Sorry, yeah, sorry, Zach. bro. <laughs> Zach is way too chatty. I, yeah. I don't get it. Zach, well, tell us I, what inspires you when you hear this heritage stuff. What happens to you? Ooh, that's a tough question. No, so answer it, bro. Come on. Well, I want to hear you talk. I mean, for for me, it's interesting to, you know all the stories you guys are telling uh it's always interesting to hear all these things and um you know like i've read i was actually about to bring this up but um if you go online there's um all of paul clips's writings the dope from hopes those are available online um so even though i haven't met him myself obviously um you know you get a sense of who he was from from just his writing and like what you're what you're saying man about you know the bullshit he called out <laughs> in some of those articles is is pretty hilarious but you know he was coming from a place of trying to bring the truth forward um and it's really it's honestly just an honor to be able to have a hand in all these historic products like you know the clips horn is decades older than i am but it's something that you know we have to take care of and you know nurture in a way amen so it's really um, you know, if you, it's a big responsibility, but it's also an honor to just be a part of these products that are so historic and part of audio history. Um, and to be able to leave my mark on that in any way possible is is pretty amazing. That's fantastic. That's awesome. That's awesome, Zach. You know what, Zach? Um, I think you're you're worthy, brother. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, yeah, Roy. I think so too, man. Definitely. I want to give props. I want to give product. Pro uh, Props to the heritage guys. You know, that's, that's of course, Matt and uh, Mr. Uh, Chief Bona head here, uh, but also Jim Hunter, you know, all these guys in Travis is Travis going to come on screen. I mean, Richard, you know, all these guys, the founding principles of the heritage museum, Paul Jacobs, Oscar Bernardo, I mean, our own executives, you know, people that have dedicated themselves to heritage that includes Rob Stanley. You know, I mean, we have a lot of passionate people, in and around the company but you know the fact of the matter is is to keep his spirit alive in this company in this company not it, just it, the has, it has to. yes and and here's here's why it's relevant for zach and maybe some of the younger folks visiting we are documenting digitally audio history things that we cannot afford to get lost in a fire lost in a generation prior, never to be captured and shared with the future generations of why the hi-fi industry birthed in the United States, and then of course spreading throughout the world, fanatically around the world. You know, all of our friends who are on here, you know, some from Australia, you know, passionate audiophiles in Europe, in Japan, in Asia, all over the world, Russia, you know, you name it. You know, you know what, you know what, uh, you know what, uh, Mark, I just got an email yesterday from a guy um, in Thailand, who through the videos and all that, he just wanted to thank us. Um, he went and bought a pair of AK6s, never heard it, and but saw the videos. Are we ta us talking about it? And, and he he said he's I I've fallen in love with them, and I just wanted to thank you guys. Thailand, bro. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool, it's a, and that's it's a power of it yeah it's not yeah. just it's not what we're saying it's the power of music music mm -hmm. is an unstoppable force in this world and it spans a lifetime i mean it's music you take it with you from the beginning to the end and you know i do get a little bit emotional you know people might laugh a little bit we do love our, our work but but at the same time you know it's this is job, bro 
it, it, it is a job. It, it, it takes 110% to do it right. Because, you know, we're not just thinking about, oh, we're going to have a new product, you know, this brand, it might make it. No, no, this brand is going to go another, another 75 years. We have a burden on our shoulders to carry this living legacy forward, Paul Klipsch himself. And, you know, it, it is a measure of pride. We do take pride in our work. We, we should. We, we have to. Uh, well, to get well, because of because of the because of the 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 bar where it's been set for us, and right. and you know what's interesting about that? We often get questions, even from our own teams. Wow, Stephen just confirmed yeah. that fifty-seven fifty. That's awesome! Wow, that, that is awesome. Oh, that's funny. Some are conceding, but I, I you know, I I, kinda, I think I lost my train of thought. Well, you know, while, while, while you're waiting to get back on the train, I want to say this because a, a good friend of mine, uh, Daniel, and, and I want to repeat what he said. Don't forget to visit the Clips Museum of Audio History and consider a membership. Yeah. That's yep. a great way to support. Yep. yep. And they, they, we have memberships starting as low as $30 a year. And then all the way up to you can be part of the, the Clipshorn Club, um, which has additional benefits and, and different things. Um, but the great thing about the museum is really um, we are focused on science education. We are focused on extending um, the work of Paul W. Klipsch and um, the idea of being able to um, react uh, to, you know, the world of acoustics now, but be able to present solid scientific facts on how things are and call bullshit occasionally on some things well, I think is really important. Here's a shout out to our dedicated heritage dealers globally. Amen. Dem oh, Dem amen. Dem amen. Dem amen. Dem yeah. Demonstrating. You dealers. know what? I mean, you know what? Cause you know how, how we set it up. I mean, the things they had to do and you know what, how they present the product and they get it, you know, starting the heritage program uh, was best idea we ever had because oh, yeah uh, because be, you know because of the way the product is presented the you yeah. know with quality gear and stuff i mean it's yes shout out to them yeah you well know, here's a shout out to our partners there. carry audio for doing a heritage series sli yeah, yeah. with wood panels we make and we ship with to them yes. Yes. walnut that we make to match your corn walls or whatever on the, your carry audio amplifier you know, also, you know, Project, MoFi, Cobuzz, you know, Roy, are you going to get your, your, you need to get signed up for Cobuzz. I'm going to hold you to it. Dave, if you're listening, I'm working on them because high res audio, high res audio, the highest quality recordings, it's you have to play it through the heritage products. You, you got to get the best recordings you can find. Zach, help um, me, Zach. Help me, Zach. No. Uh, no one I, <laughs> I tried to talk about how I like low low quality recordings before, but you know. <laughs> you're not safe for me. You can run, you can't hide. I will find yeah. you. I will I'm on the road. I you know what I, what I would mention is that if you are interested in some of the stuff we've been talking about, um, uh, with the museum, um, you know, uh, Roy has uh, what he calls bonehead classes um, where you can register and you can learn about speaker making. You can learn about all the stuff, the science that goes into this. Uh, Zach, but I, Zach, it's not that funny, Zach. Yeah. I <laughs> encourage you to go to clipsmuseum.org to check out uh, all the stuff that the museum is doing. We are down to the, the wire on this auction. And I, I think, have we announced a winner? I saw something come up a minute ago. Who's the current leader? Where are we at on the auction of the uh, Museum One of One Edition Heresy Fours? It looks like Steven Teleska. Is that it? Is that right? Yeah. What's the current amount? Fifty-seven fifty. Oh, fantastic! Fantastic, wow. man! What a great support of impression. Yeah, what a great support of the museum. That's fantastic. That's amazing. What do you guys think? Are we going to call it? Is anybody going to beat that 57? Well, we said, congratulations. I think we said uh, 5.30, so my my clock says three more minutes. But I've, I've heard some – I've seen some people concede to, uh, to Mr. Steven, so we'll see. Yeah, we've got, we've got one more minute in the, in the auction. Oh, uh, Chief Bonehead's name is Roy Delgado. Everybody, in case you're wondering, there's somebody asking, so you know, it's out there. Now. Well, you know, I don't like, you know what, Mark? I don't like to give my name out because 
I'm hoping the warrants have already expired. <laughs> oh, there are new ones, Roy. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> Accumulated daily. Um, you know, I wanted to remind everybody that if you're looking at the Forte and you're excited about what we talked about today and you want to get back to it, go to clips.com. Click on the Forte link that is at the top of the website. You'll see the picture of the Forte, and you can get involved. You can get, figure out how you can get uh, connected with a heritage dealer, get a great demo, um, buy the speakers. Um, but we're really proud of this new line of, of uh, heritage products that has come out this year. Um, and the Forte is just one long line of that. But those are fantastic speakers. Uno mas. Uno mas this year, right? First one. No. First one yeah. more. Yeah. One, one more. Oh, yeah. Other stuff we got a lot, a lot planned for our 75th anniversary. How about another toast, everybody? Hopefully, you have a little bit there. Uh, all of our viewing audience, we we love you so much. Thank you for joining us. Uh, I I will not have the final word. I will just say, uh, bless everybody. Stay safe and healthy. And hopefully, you're listening to a lot of music, and that contributes to your health. So why don't you guys go around and give a final uh, wish? Yeah, I'd like to uh, thank everybody for supporting the, the Eclipse Museum. Um, the work that's being done there is uh, astronomical. Um, we're opening up a new visitor center right next to the uh, Bill Clinton Memorial Birthplace um, and some other places in Hope, Arkansas, um, as well as some really cool stuff. So I encourage you to check out ClipsMuseum.org and then check out uh, Clips.com for the, uh, the all the Forte stuff. Once you get into that Forte webpage, it has all the technical details about the product you could ever want. So uh, more in depth than we even got tonight. So uh, thanks everybody for joining. Go ahead, Zach. Me first. Um, yeah. I just want to give a thank you to everyone who's online with us. Um, you guys are all really what makes these fun and exciting for us, you know, seeing all the comments, um, all the questions you all post, all the feedback we get on these systems. It really makes, um, you know, a lot of the work that we put into, like the heart and the soul that we put into these products really helps to validate all that. Um, so a thank you to everyone who's here and sharing this experience with us. Stay safe, stay healthy. Um, thank you everyone for joining us. And I, I really want to offer um, a toast to uh, the guy that kind of made it possible for, uh, for us to even be here. Mr. Paul Klipsch, God bless him. Cheers. Cheers. I'll drink that in his honor. All right. Feel free, everybody, to drop us some um, comments on uh, future listening lounge topics. We've got a couple teed up. Usually we tie it to new product launches that we've got coming, but we could also discuss a lot of basics of audio kind of stuff with sensitivity. Our... <laughs> I'll, yeah, let's I talk about that. On that we... I want to be on that one. Not nearly enough has been said about sensitivity measurements, so we can go down that road if you want. Uh, and, and there are all kinds of fun topics we can cover. Uh, we just, you know, this has been the silver lining for us. Uh, we're all, you know, working out of our home offices, but it does thrust us into this conversation with our customers, you know, the people that have this in their home. So this is a great opportunity. It's forever changed us as a company to have this direct conversation. But also to reach out to our dealers, again, I'm going to do a shout out to all of our demonstrating dealers. Uh, you guys are working hard through these times, and we, we're with you, and we appreciate all that you're doing. Of course, we're partners in this, uh, reaching our customers, making everybody happy. So thank you, everybody. Any other comments, Matt? Any final comments? I'm just glad everybody joined today, and I'm glad we sold these uh, heresies. Thank you for benefiting mu the museum. It's fantastic. Okay. Thank you.